An update to breaking news. We're following in Troy. A gunman has been taken into custody after barricading himself inside a house in Troy for more than 12 hours. Police say the situation started around 3.30 this morning when a man in his 30s randomly fired more than a dozen shots from his parents' home into the neighborhood. The situation was resolved safely. No injuries reported iPhone users, this one's for you. There's now a fix for the text bomb bug discovered this weekend. The bug could cause your phone, iPad, your watch, or even your computer to crash if you sent or received a special text character from the Indian language of Telugu. And your messaging apps would be unusable without restoring your phone completely. But last night, Apple released a fix for all devices and recommends updating as soon as you can. Pop quiz, if you are KFC, what's the one thing you don't want to run out of? Biscuits, gravy. Try again. Chicken, fried chicken, and that's exactly what's happening right now. The fast food chain has temporarily closed about 800 of the company's 900 locations in the UK, blaming the chicken shortage on a logistics mix-up. KFC has not released an estimate on when the shuttered stores might reopen, but, uh, you know, maybe they'll stop running the Reba commercial at the same time for a while. Give us a break on that one. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> Local 4 News at 6 Just get the is chicken next. back. Hey, Devin. They should just fry big chunks of the batter. That's all anybody oh, wants Oh, that anyway. crunchy so batter. It's fine. Mm. Uh, working on stories coming up from Port Huron, Troy, and Madison Heights. And here's Nick. I'm Nick Monticelli inside of Macomb County's Comtech Center. Normally, you're going to see 911 dispatchers, but now something new up on the giant wall. Cameras inside of schools in case there's an active shooter. A disaster for this family. Their backyard dug up because the basement filled with raw sewage. We have to block the kitchen off, hold the side door open, and put a fan there to pull the odor out the house. It's been like this for almost two months, and they're looking for some help. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A dreadful discovery in mid-Michigan. A mother from Oakland County and her two children found dead in an apparent murder-suicide. A raw sewage nightmare inside a Detroit home, and this one's even affecting the next-door neighbor. Also, four live radars showing the rain that just won't let up, and it is leading to flooding across parts of Metro Detroit. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6. This uh, rain has been relentless and it tops our news. It's been going on all day. Tonight, Public Works officials in both Macomb and Oakland counties are asking everyone to reduce water usage while it's raining in order to prevent sewer overflows. Part of this that you don't often think about. Uh, let's start with Ben and how much more of this we can expect, Ben? Well, it looks like in some spots we may get up to an additional inch on top of what we've already got, but at least four live radar is not solid green. There are some areas that are not seeing rain from the city downriver through the south zone and then northwest of there, there's some lighter rain, but we're expecting that to become a little bit uh, intensified. There's a line right now of some moderate and even heavy rain out here uh, just to the east of Kalamazoo heading towards cold water. That's going to advance into the area by mid evening tonight. That's in front of a cold front, which is also going to exacerbate our rainfall totals overnight. Highest total we've seen so far, 40 inches or 40 hour total, almost two inches, 1.93 technically in Garden City, and that was as of 4 p.m. Uh, Warnings are out for a lot of the rivers from Rouge River to the Clinton River to the Lower Rouge, Mill Creek and multiple rivers in Genesee County. That's what we're expecting at least minor flooding and flood watches in effect for the entire area through Wednesday afternoon. Temperatures are going to stay mild as that rain returns, especially by uh, 8 to 10 o'clock tonight. We'll talk more about what's to come on the other side of that in just a few minutes. And don't forget to download our local forecasters app. You can follow the water, the severe weather alerts and a lot more right in the palm of your hand. Download it for free in your app store by searching WDIV. Devin? Ben, and as the rain keeps coming, we keep adding more and more areas to the lists of flooding problems. That's right. You're seeing video from Nicholas Street near Davis Drive in Utica, where water is covering the area. Uh, you can see there are some houses in the neighborhood have it worse than others, but it's definitely a concern for them all. It looks like some drivers are still making it through the high water levels. Uh, but conditions are expected to get worse as the rain continues. There you can see the cars kind of moving through there. We'll keep updating on that, but now let's get to uh, the news that we need to update that we've been following in Troy. A man with a gun has now been taken into custody after barricading himself inside a home for most of the day. Neighbors in the area of Big Beaver and Adams were asked to stay in their basements or leave the area altogether while the gunman was inside. Police say this all started around 3.30 this morning when a man in his 30s 
randomly fired more than a dozen shots from his parents' home into the neighborhood. But the situation resolved safely and happy to report there have been no injuries reported. Meanwhile, we have new information on a breaking story we brought you at 5 o'clock of an apparent murder-suicide involving an Oakland County mother and her two children. They were found up in Bangor Township near Bay City. Jermont Terry has been watching these developments. Uh, he's in our newsroom with more. Jermont. Devin and Kimberly, since 5 o'clock, I've learned that the boy was two years old, his sister only three years old, and the latest investigation shows that investigators did a well-being check at a house in Oak Park, but unfortunately, they did not find that mother and children at that home in Oakland County. Instead, several hours later and more than 100 miles away, they found the family. That's where they ended up. Now, tonight, it doesn't appear that this mother has any connection to this area. It's believed she drove north to commit this terrible crime. A maintenance man found the black Lincoln behind a building. He thought it was odd, and when he went to see why the car was there, he made the gruesome discovery. A brother and sister shot in their heads and as I mentioned we now know the ages of the children the boy two, the girl three years old investigators say that they found the children's mother in the front seat she died from what is believed to be a self-inflicted gunshot injury and the gun was in fact nearby in the car the exact motive is still unclear but investigators believe there was some custody dispute issues going on with the children's father but no matter the situation it's hard to wrap your mind around such a senseless act it's tragic. Something like this is so horrific that it's just beyond comprehension. And tonight, the names of the mother and children have not been released. But again, we do know that investigators in Oakland County came to do a well-being check at a home in Oak Park. But unfortunately, it was too late. The children and mother were already gone. That's the very latest with this breaking news update. Jermont Terry, Local 4. All right, Jermont and more as we continue to learn more. Now to the scenario we all fear when too much rain causes flooding, and that's raw sewage backing up into the basements. In one Detroit home, it's so bad the people living there are moving out. And this is also a problem for the next door neighbor. Steve Garagiola shows us the ordeal up close. Their backyard is a disaster completely dug up for a couple months now because raw sewage is getting pumped out of the basement and the landlord tells this family, nothing I can do about it. So far deep down here, man, you can't believe it. For six weeks, Zolly Grant and his wife have been living with this in the backyard and this. Sewer just kept coming up in the basement. They pumped it out maybe four different times. Here's the violations from the city of all these different code violations and they have not complied. The landlord had the backyard dug up, and his solution has been to pump the water and sewage out of the basement, onto the neighbor's property, and out into the street. I'm a cancer survivor. Five years this week, I'm cleared. I told him I don't want to develop something else because my system is not up to par. Mr. Grant says he has tried to deal with the property owner, a man named Irving Seals. So I called the landlord, who owns other houses in the area, and he tells me that this really is not his fault. I haven't seen a notice. I haven't gotten a notice. The guy at the house haven't told me about the notice. So I called the mayor's office. Turns out inspectors have been out here several times and came back again this afternoon. The city says the owner will be contacted again. I'm quite sure when it all boils down, Right. I can't do nothing about it. I'm not a plumber. But you could get people out here to fix it. I already did that. So maybe you're asking, why doesn't the family just move? Because it's not that easy. They have, we have to go. We don't have the funds to leave, sir. There is no short-term solution for this mess for the folks who live here. They tell me they will try to move in with other family elsewhere until they hopefully have a home again. In Detroit, I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. It's okay, Steve, and we just heard back from the city of Detroit. They say their part of the sewage line is clear, so the responsibility lies with the owner of the home. So the city says they intend to go after him until he fixes it. It was an emotional day for the Detroit Police Force as Officer Darren Weathers was laid to rest. The 25-year-old officer had only been a member of the Detroit Police Department for a short while, but left a lasting impact. He was killed last week during a surveillance training exercise. Mayor Mike Duggan spoke about what kind of person Weathers was at the service. That the city of Detroit is so proud 
of everything that Darren Weathers stood for and the kind of man that he was. Detroit Police Chief James Craig also spoke about Weathers, saying he was a phenomenal officer. Friends, family, and colleagues remember him as the type of role model they wanted on the streets of Detroit. As victims of the Parkland shooting are laid to rest in Florida, there are some changes happening here at home uh, designed to make a difference if one of our schools should ever come under attack. Some schools have allowed police agencies access to their cameras in an emergency. And as Nick Monticelli reports, that list is growing rapidly in Macomb County. If you remember, we ran a story last week about school districts and police agencies working together, specifically in Roseville. What's happening now is that more and more school districts are realizing this is probably a good idea. David Lincoln Adams. The contact center in Macomb County is the hub for emergency communications, but now it can also be the hub if there's the unfortunate situation of an active shooter in a Macomb County school. Today, county leaders showed off the technology, tapping into cameras at Utica High School at 21 in Shelby Road. Because prior to technology like this, cops would race there and ask for blueprints. They can zoom in, they can do rotation on those cameras. So if there was somebody hiding in a multi-purpose room or somebody hiding in a bathroom or somebody's in one of the school rooms, we're able to see that live. Live cameras all over the place, which area police chiefs say is a huge advantage. Well, it's, 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 it's gigantic. I mean, you're going, hey, we got reports of uh, shots fired at you know such and such a high school, and the officers are gonna race there as fast as they can and run in the front doors and you know begging for some kind of information. These schools are gigantic, gigantic pieces. Now, hopefully, be more specifically like in the main hallway outside the gym. Of course, there is the concern of Big Brother, someone watching over you, especially kids. But it's clear, these cameras will only be used in emergency situations, but still, some school districts are or were hesitant. We've been having ongoing conversations um, with our security team, with the chiefs, and the, I mean, it's time. This technology is being used in police departments in some local agencies like Roseville. This is simply an expansion, trying to get more schools involved. Because as we have learned, the first officers can no longer wait for backup. So at least these cameras can help. These scenarios all play out the same way, a couple, two, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, and they're over with. We don't have time to wait for backup. In Mount Clemens, Nick Monticelli, Local 4. You know, schools or school districts have to partner with law enforcement agencies to allow this before any camera gets connected to another system. Of the 21 school districts in Macomb County, a handful right now are connected, including Utica Community Schools and Chippewa Valley Schools. Still ahead, putting a new diet trend to the test. Does a meal plan tailored to your DNA actually make a difference? Yeah, that's coming up in Good Health, and here's Jamie. Janice Weary isn't a dress designer, but her living room is filled with dresses. They sort of live in my living room more than I do, to tell you the truth. Why she's stockpiling all of these beautiful gowns? Hint, it's for a really good cause. And next, a former doctor in trouble with the law. What police say he was doing out of an Oakland County hotel room. Next. Prime time. A man with an expired medical license was arrested in Madison Heights for trying to sell prescription drugs. Police say the man seen here put an ad on Craigslist saying that he was a doctor who had the drugs and party favors available at a hotel in Madison Heights. The former doctor is originally from Warren, was arrested on site. It was discovered he had a number of fraudulently manufactured prescriptions in his hotel room and hundreds of credit card numbers. Prom may not be for everyone, but one Ann Arbor woman wants to make sure it's not because of the cost of a prom dress. So she's putting in her own sweat equity to make sure every girl can find the dress, the dress. Jamie Edmonds has the story. Janice Weary's Ann Arbor living room has been overtaken by dresses in every color, every size, and every style. This one, it, it, to me, is unbelievable. Weary is the founder of the A2 Prom Dress Project, a little idea she had as she volunteered at a local thrift shop. We've, we've got to have a better venue and um, get these dresses out of closets and give them another chance. That little idea has grown into a very big operation. The way it works, Weary asks for donations of gently worn gowns. She hand washes and irons each one. In the spring, she holds a sale. 
In its sixth season, it's bigger than ever. So much so, Weary had to get a storage unit just to house all of the dresses. They sort of live in my living room more than I do, to tell you the truth. The dresses cost between $10 and $25. A steal when you think about what they cost new. There's an alternative here. Um, it, it's for anybody who wants a dress. Weary says she puts thousands of hours of work into this, and when a young girl finds the one, her heart melts. When the girls get a dress that's meant for them, the smiles are just, oh, they're just so beautiful. Just really just make you feel so wonderful. So you can see all of these dresses on sale on March 11th. I'll put the information on clickondetroit.com. But if you can't make it or say you have a dress to donate, Jan says keep them coming because she always works on them during the year. There's always next year. In Ann Arbor, Jamie Edmonds, Local 4. It's fantastic, Jamie. Thank you. And after Janice covers the cost of the storage unit, she donates all the money from the sale to charity. That's fantastic. How about that? Really great. <laughs> now to good health. It's a growing trend. Diets based on your individual DNA. But a new study suggests it really doesn't make a big difference. Researchers at Stanford tracked overweight adults who followed either low-fat or low-carb low diets. One group was assigned a diet based on their genetics. The other group assigned at random. And after one year, both groups had similar levels of weight loss. Scientists say it's possible other genetic factors could impact dieting, so more research is needed. Another fad diet. <laughs> exactly. You can tailor this to your genes. Calories in, calories That's out. That's how it's going to be. We can't seem to get around that, can we? And the rain keeps coming in. Uh, uh, we can't get around that either. And we've, if you were just joining us off the top of the newscast, we've got all kinds of problems that are getting worse right now because the creeks and the water levels keep going up. Yeah. And, you know, when we see this amount of rainfall in the spring and summer, we usually don't bat an eye. I mean, one to two inches, we can usually handle it, especially if we haven't seen rain for a while. But the ground's frozen. You've got the melting snow. Then you've got potentially ice ice coming downstream uh, from upstream uh, that could be gumming up the works and all that is working together to just make a mess of things across the area. Even though we're sort of cutting the corner here, getting a little bit of a break, you can see there's much more rain to go as that is along a cold front that's going to sweep through later on this evening and into tonight. So far, rainfall totals have gotten near but not quite to two inches, almost uh, 1.9 there in Farmington Hills. Metro Airport just about 1.8, over an inch and a half in Waterford and then those totals decrease. Uh, Monroe only about nine tenths right now. One of the uh, lower totals that we have seen. We've showed you pictures of creeks, streams and rivers, but this is a backyard in Frazier. Rick sent us this on storm pens. You can see the grass is there. The snow has gone, uh, but that rain is really starting to stack up in a lot of low lying areas and especially as we get towards nightfall. Be aware that some of the roads that weren't covered earlier today may be as the sun goes down. So please take care, uh, take it easy and uh, make sure you slow your speeds as you get uh, on the roads tonight. 60 degrees is where we're at right now with the south wind at 8. And you can see that the high temperature today, 63 degrees. That tied our record set back in 2016. And we may have the warmest low as well at 49, but numbers will come down a bit towards midnight. So we'll wait to officially anoint uh, a broken record there. As far as the cold front goes, that sweeps through tonight. Again, the rain intensifies mid to late evening. And then once we get on the back side of it, we'll see, still continue seeing it raining through the morning commute tomorrow. The faucets finally shut off by about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then if we get any sunshine at all tomorrow, it's just going to be some thinning clouds here in our north zone. Do bank on a lot of cloud cover and temperatures are going to be much colder in the afternoon compared to where we were today with that incredible 60 degree finish. Here's a look at how things are going to be when we step out the door in the morning. Already noticing a difference. In fact, we'll begin the day 9 a.m. here at about 38 degrees in the city. That's what will be at the airport as well. Just about everybody will be in the mid to upper 30s. The good news is, is I don't think that we'll see any sub freezing temperatures tomorrow morning. It's going to be awfully close here in our west zone. Lots of 33s out there in Livingston and Washtenaw County and here in our north zone as well. We'll see a couple 33s as we start out our Wednesday morning. Otherwise, highs only get to 42. We will be dry after the commute. We'll also be dry on Thursday, but the rain comes back Friday. Saturday and Sunday. It's not going to be continuous and the amounts are going to be an inch or less, but we will need some time to dry out and unfortunately that's going to be coming at the right yeah, time. Yeah, sure is. All right, Bernie's coming up with sports. Stay with us for that. I'm up